tonight on Channel 6 News at 5. We turned over everything that was work-related. Every single thing. The report is out. What the Inspector General found out about the FBI investigation into Hillary Clinton's emails. What you're looking at is 10,000 toys all packed up and ready to head home. Isolated showers and thunderstorms continue to finish the work week, but better rain chances on the way for all of Central Texas. I'll have your latest seven day coming up. Plus, how a 104 year old woman is proving age is just a number. Channel 6 News starts right now. Good evening. Thank you for joining us. I'm Doug Curran. And I'm Leslie Draffin. A fire that destroyed a Colleen pool hall early this morning was set on purpose. That is according to investigators this afternoon. It happened at the Sticks Pool Hall on East Rancier. Channel 6 News reporter Andrew Moore is at the scene right now. Andrew, what have we learned so far? Guys, the fire marshal I spoke to was hesitant to use the word arson, but he did say the fire was absolutely intentionally set in the pool hall right behind me. It was set in the bar area uh, in front of that hall. And they tell me that while firefighters spent about an hour trying to put this out and they were actually eventually successful in that the building was scorched end to end in that time. Now, people who were in the uh, or employees, I, I wanted to say in the uh, that work here tell me nobody should have been inside the building that early in the day. The pool hall did have multiple security cameras, but right now investigators don't know if any of the footage can be saved. When I talked to the pool hall's bouncer earlier today, he was still in shock that someone would do this at a place so many enjoy. It's honestly unreal because we try to be pleasant to our customers. I'm most respected of everybody here, and it's shocking that someone would actually do this to this bar. Now, both Collins and the Clean Fire Department are now hoping someone is going to come forward with information about this case. And if you can help, please call Bell County Crime Stoppers. We will have the number for them on our site at KCENTV.com. Live in Colleen, I'm Andrew Moore with Channel 6 News. All right, thanks, Andrew. Now let's get you a check of that forecast. Channel 6 meteorologist Zach Scott's joining us now with a look at what's going on outside. Hey, Zach. Hey there, Doug. We need some rainfall. New drought monitor released today, and we can see areas of uh, abnormally dry and moderate conditions continuing to spread across our eastern areas. Areas east of I-35 really needs the rain the most. And some of these areas picking up on a sprinkle or two. We've had these sea breeze showers and thunderstorms going as we've gone through really the last several days. This is typical, something we see here this time of year across our southeastern areas. We're going to continue with these over the next couple of days, but that's not going to help us get out of the drought. What could help with our drought conditions will be coming as we go Father's Day into next week. A few spotty sprinkles around limestone, maybe back into Robertson County. The majority of the activity is still off towards the east and southeast of us. Best chance for one of these sea breeze thunderstorms over the next two hours is going to be again the Brazos Valley. Uh, once we get sun to go sunset, we'll see any showers out there dissipate pretty quickly. Still mid to upper 90s heading into your evening, so temperatures are going to fall into the 80s, maybe mid to upper 80s by 10 o'clock, and it still feels pretty sticky outside. Hey, as I mentioned, rain chances are increasing as we go through the next several days. Father's Day doesn't necessarily look like a washout to me right now, but that's when we start to see those rain chances going up. We'll see when our best rain chances come in a couple more minutes, guys. All right, thanks, Zach. A new report by the Inspector General's office is out. It includes some strong words about former FBI Director James Comey and his handling of the Hillary Clinton email investigation. Susan McGinnis joins us with the highlights. Susan. Leslie, this report was widely anticipated and everyone from Capitol Hill to the White House to James Comey himself has something to say about it. In a scathing 500 page report, the Justice Department's internal watchdog finds former FBI Director James Comey was insubordinate, deviated from FBI norms and damaged the agency's image in its handling of the Hillary Clinton email investigation. But the 18-month investigation did not find any political motivation from Comey or others in the FBI before the 2016 election. The president's supporters and detractors are each seizing on different findings in the report. The president's sycophants and cronies are going to distort and spin this report, seeking to discredit the special counsel. President Trump sees proof he was right to fire Comey. It reaffirmed the president's suspicions about Comey's conduct and the political bias among some of the members of the FBI. Comey calls the report reasonable, but says he disagrees. 
Another focus of the report, text messages between two top FBI employees involved in a personal relationship. Lisa Page telling Peter Strzok he's not ever going to become president, right? Right? Strzok responding, no, no he won't, we'll stop it. The report says the two showed a willingness to take official action to prevent Trump from becoming president, but not finding they actually did so. One question yet to be answered, does this report hurt James Comey's credibility as a key witness in the Russia investigation? In Washington, Susan McGinnis, Channel 6 News. Leslie? All right, thanks, Susan. Now, there are also reports that some are looking for a second special counsel to look into the FBI and Justice Department. Congressional Democratic leaders are calling the policy of separating migrant children and parents at detention centers along the U.S.-Mexico border both un-American and barbaric, and House Speaker Paul Ryan says he's not comfortable with the separation policy either. House Democratic leader Nancy Pelosi accused the Trump administration of planning the separation policy for a while and said she's surprised there aren't, in her words, uprisings around the country. Speaker Ryan says he does not want children separated. He says the best remedy is through congressional legislation, not an administration ruling. Well, in tonight's Military Matters, 10,000 toys from Fort Hood's Santa's Workshop are heading back home. In April, we brought you the story about the toys, including some donations uh, during the Camo Santa Drive, and they got water damage. Channel 6 military reporter Jillian Angeline got the latest on where those toys are right now. Hi, Jillian. Well, Doug Leslie, the toys were transported back to the original Santa's workshop today next to the commissary off of Clear Creek. Just this morning, I was standing in a large parking lot in the middle of boxes and boxes of toys, books, soccer balls, and even large stuffed animals. Santa's workshop president Emily Damboys tells me they're ahead of schedule, moving the presents back to their original location. Soldiers from three Corps and the first cab division, along with 13th ESC, have been lending their hands for the past few months to move the countless boxes, but it wasn't the easiest process, she explains. We thought we were going to lose uh, uh, thousands of toys uh, due to mold and mildew and because most of our products are organic products, whether they're box and cardboard or they're fabric and luckily we were able to salvage quite a few of them, but we couldn't keep them in the building. Now Santa's workshop is a year round operation and they didn't stop when everything moved. The volunteer elves were constantly shopping, looking for the best deal still. They've got the Christmas in July fundraiser coming up next month on the 11th at Texas Roadhouse. And in other military matters news around Fort Hood, remember them moving with the military spouses who surprised a military child with a room makeover? Well, these spouses are thinking big and opened up a pop-up store at the PX on Post, featuring DIY projects Maria Reed and Chandy Elch use in their makeovers. And products made by other military spouses or family members too. Ulch tells me just why their store is called Oak Leaf Lane. The oak leaf can be found in all five branches somehow, some way, and so it just celebrates. Um, oak Leaf Lane is a matter of celebrating the military community. It's about saying that we all have some creativity in us and we want to highlight that. Now, Olds tells me they are still hoping their show gets picked up by a network like HDTV. The pop-up store will be at the PX until June 17th, Father's Day, so just a few days left. Doug Leslie, back to you. All right, thanks, Jillian. Well, we want to now get you to some breaking news out of Denver. We're being told that two kids and two adults have been shot in a Denver dentist's office. We're not sure uh, who is alive and who is not. We are told that there are fatalities. Again, live pictures now out of Denver at a dentist office where two adults and two children have been shot. There are fatalities. We're not sure who uh, who is dead and who is not. We, of course, will keep you up to date right here on Channel 6 as well as KCENTV.com. Today is Flag Day across the United States, and here are some fun facts about Old Glory. Congress first adopted the Stars and Stripes as an American flag on June 14, 1977. The 13 stripes represent the original 13 colonies, and each star symbolizes each state. The first flag observances started as a class lesson. 19-year-old hmm. teacher placed the flag in a bottle on his desk and assigned the students to write an essay about the flag and its significance. Now, in August of 1949, President Truman signed an act of Congress designating June 14th National Flag Day. And as we celebrate the flag, we also want to wish the U.S. Army a happy 243rd birthday. 
The U.S. Army was founded June 14, 1775, when the Continental Congress authorized enlistment of expert riflemen to serve the United Colonies for one year. And we also want to thank every single person who serves our nation's military. Also, if you're celebrating Flag Day or you're part of the Army or really any military veteran, you can feel free to share your pictures with us on Facebook. Still to come on Channel 6 News at 5.